Exodus chapter 14. And as you're getting it in your Bible, they put it up on the screen. I just want to encourage you, every one of you this morning, to ble- please um, make every effort to be here next Sunday. It's at 4 o'clock, our anniversary service, our ninth year of existing as a local church. And we're going to have a great time. And especially our members, you know, um, we want you to come and to enjoy the celebration. There are other churches, pastors and ministers that are going to join with us. And um, we're just looking forward, amen, for the glory of God to come down in this house. We're embarking in, um, in a building project and things are looking favorable for us in going forward. And uh, we need your prayer. And so we need your prayer. Someone told me last, last night, they were listening to Joel Austin last week, and he says, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that we're going to buy a church building. The bad news is the money is in your pocket. <laughs> and so truly we... Um, We're looking forward, and uh, as I said, I'm not here to beg anybody for no money. But we do have um, pledges, and if you're part of this ministry or you feel led in in some way by the Holy Spirit to to pledge towards our building fund, I'll tell you up front, and even those who are watching by the internet, you can help pledge also. The Lord lead you. We need about $100,000 to add to what we have. And I believe that God can provide it. I said, God can provide it. I didn't ask one specific person. I said, God can provide it. And I believe that we're coming into a place where God had assigned us to do certain things for him. And I believe that we have reached a place in our walk, in our journey, that we're going to have, amen, what he knows that we need to be able to carry out um, and to do what he wants us to do. How many believe that? I personally want to thank everybody and from all our members who are paying the tithes faithfully. Thank you. I want to thank those who are giving to the church. I want to thank you for those who are working in the church, those who are serving, and those who are praying. Thank you, because we can't do this without you. And um, I can only tell you that God is indebted to no man. Whatever you do for God, he's going to reward you greatly. Amen. Amen. So I just want to thank you uh, again from the bottom of my head for all your support. And so we're looking forward for a great time um, next Sunday. We're going to Exodus chapter 14. And um, I want to jump ahead and and just say the Lord speak unto Moses saying. And we're going straight into verse 13. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who who you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Tell the neighbor, the Lord is going to fight your battles. Verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hands over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will, I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. I want to thank God for the reading of his word today. Many of us are familiar with the 
the event that took place during this period of time in history. We have seen and we have read and heard many accounts of this event being ministered unto us. Because we know that God's people, they were in Egypt. And at a point of time, they had favor from the Pharaoh. And therefore, they were able to occupy Goshen. But that particular Pharaoh died. And as a result, the next Pharaoh who was in line, he was fearful of God's people. Because he saw that the people was becoming great. They entered Egypt with just about 70 people. And now they grow into the millions. And therefore it was a great concern of the Pharaoh. And his fear was that these people who were considered the Hebrew people will overtake Egypt. And so therefore he devised a plan with his military um, council that they put a plan together to keep amen, the Hebrew people in bondage. And so the luxury or the things that they used to enjoy while in Egypt was not there anymore. In fact, it got so devious that the Bible tells us that Pharaoh assigned taskmasters over God's people. And God's people had, were beaten like slaves and you heard the sentiments concerning black history that the, the, the blacks came in, they were brought in as slaves and to work in plantation and they were treated very badly. But thank God for a person who had a dream. Thank God for such a person like Martin Luther Jr. And what he, the dream that he had and the vision, even though that he was not there to see it unfold, amen, I want you to know that his dream did come to pass. And so in the same token today that God's people were in bondage and they were slaves, they had to make the bricks for Pharaoh to build his, his uh, um, humongous um, castles and so forth. And we have seen that even it reached a point that the Pharaoh used to provide the straws for the people to make the bricks and he was so upset and wanted to destroy the people that he told them they had to go get their own straws to make the bricks and so we are quite aware of the event but we see something happening over 400 years they were in bondage but i want you to know a god that we serve is a god who hears our prayer today and for many of us amen you may cry a lot of tears i believe this is my own opinion I believe tears are liquid prayer before God. I also believe that the God that I serve, he's a God who hears our prayer. And he's a God who answered. In fact, David wrote in Psalm 116, he says, I love the Lord thy God, because he have inclined his ear to hear me. How many are just glad to know that God, amen, the God that you serve have ear to hear this morning? There are people who are serving other gods, who have to hear, but they can't hear. They have hands, but can't move. They have feet and can't walk. And in fact, that person may have to carry their God. But how many grateful that your God carries you? <coughs> and so when we look at what was happening, God's people were crying out for deliver deliverance. And God heard their prayer. And as a result, Pharaoh was opposing what God was declaring to Moses. And God showed forth his mighty power. And we all know about the ten plagues that took place in Egypt. And the last plague was the very sad thing that Pharaoh had told Moses that would happen to the Hebrew people. But it went against him. The fingers turned against him. And as a result, every firstborn of the Egyptians were killed on that night. And so therefore, Pharaoh, we understand, told him, tell Moses, take your people and go. Because all that God was saying to Moses, that he wants his people to come to a place in the wilderness to worship him. Every evidence that was shown to scripture, but God desires people to come to a place to honor him and to worship him. And God says, I will take care of them. Are you hearing me this morning? 
And I, I'm just interjecting some thought because we are on a journey this morning. But I want you to know this morning, God must be priority in our lives. Yes, we, we, we need job. Yes, we need money. We need clothing and all of these things. But these things must not be the top priority in our lives. God must be put first. The Bible tells us, God knows you have to eat. God knows you have to pay your rent and pay your mortgage and all of these things. God knows. But through scripture, we have seen it is evident that God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all other things shall be added unto us. Are you hearing me? And too many people are putting other things first rather than God. And God wants us to put him first. Amen. We put aside and we took time for everything else. And we, God is the last person on our agenda when he should be the first. And if you want to make life easier for you, instead of complicated, put God first. Because when you put God first, you know that he's in control. Are you hear me? You need not to worry when God is in control. That's why I said in the scripture says that God will fight your battles for you. Whatever that battle is, God is going to fight that battle for you. But you've got to trust him. And by trusting him, it means that you're putting him first in your life today. And so we've seen that God sent, amen, the plagues into Egypt. And now Pharaoh says, take your people and go. But they didn't just leave because I want you to know, you might be faithful in what you're doing today. You will be faithful. And you might think, you know, what God is seeing me or maybe, you know, he's not taking note of the good things or what I've done. But I want you to know everything that you do, amen, God is taking account of it. Are you hearing me? For 400 years, the children of Israel, amen, was being used and abused by the Egyptians and the Pharaoh to build. And they wasn't getting paid. But God was taking note of everybody's wages. Are you hearing me? What they truly earned, amen. And I want you to know, after 400 years, and God brought them out of the Exodus, the Bible tells us they're left with the gold and the silver and all the precious items that Egypt had. I want you to know, God, when he started to pay you, amen, there will not be enough room to contain all that he has for you this morning. Are you with me, somebody? So don't ever think, amen, that whatever you do for God, I tell all the young people and all those who work hard in this ministry, we may not be able to financially pay you as yet, but I want you to know, amen, whatever you do for God, amen, God will reward you greatly. Are you hearing me? If you sweep the church, God is going to reward you. Are you hearing me? If it, whatever you do for God, He's going to reward you. Amen. This morning. Tell your neighbor, God will reward you. And so we, we come to a place and a position that Moses was leading his people out of the Exodus. And at this point, they were, they were happy, they were rejoicing because of the deliverance that came. Let me say something in to inject as we get into the word this morning. As we build on the foundation of what I just shared. The Bible clearly states this morning that the purpose for which Christ was born was to destroy the works of the enemy. The purpose that Christ was born was to destroy the work of Satan. The purpose that Christ was born was to destroy the work of the devil this morning. How many believe that this morning? And we have seen that Christ completed his mission on the cross. On Calvary, he completed the mission. The purpose that he came was completed when he died on the cross this morning. Never forget that this morning. The very purpose that Christ came was fulfilled when he died on the cross. And so knowing that, as we look into the passage of Scripture, as verse 13 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see, have seen today, he declares, you shall see them no more forever. I came to this house this morning, and to declare to you, I came to tell you that today is your day. Tell the neighbor, today is your day. You see, we could go to church. We could get up every Sunday morning and go to church. But you must have an expectation this morning. Are you here? You're not just coming to make up numbers and to just be a part of the worship and, and, and just to hear a word. You must expect to receive when you come into the house of the Lord. Are you, here? you must come with expectation. It's not about Pastor Dave waving a wand. Amen. To bring something to you. 
but you're coming into the presence of the Lord. And you know when you're in the presence of the Lord, God does great and mighty things. So we must come with an expectation to receive from God. When I got up this morning, I just wanted to be in the house of the Lord. Not just because I'm a pastor, but I had an expectation because every time I come in the presence of the Lord, I receive from God. I receive strength. I receive fresh revelation, insight to continue. I walk in free because why? There's something about being in the presence of God. Are you hearing me? It makes a difference. When you are not in the presence of God, you feel empty and dry. But when you're in the presence of God, amen, and the presence of God is in you, amen, no matter what the circumstances, you can still glorify God. You still have a shout. You still have a praise. Because why? There's something that satisfies from within this morning. And so God says to tell you that today is your day. I believe every day is our day. Because while God, while we're here today, God promised us in his word that tomorrow is our day of victory. Are you hearing me? And what you got to understand that while we are in today, God is already in our tomorrow. Are you hearing? That's how big God is. Because he is the alpha and he is the omega. He is the beginning and he is the end this morning. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is in our tomorrow already. So you don't need to worry. All you need to do is give God praise because he's working it out. God said to tell you today is a day of victory for the church. Today God is going to deal, amen, with the enemy. I want you to know there's some enemies that we need God to deal with and, and for God to hit those enemies some blows so hard that they can't get up again. How many of you say hallelujah? There's some enemies that is right in your back. Dogging on your heel. Everywhere you go is like they fall in you like a shadow. I am, it, it seems like you can't get over. Always there. Sometimes the devil is just yet to remind you of things of the past and remind you of your life. Are you hearing me this morning? Breathing on your neck and making you miserable. We could be in church this morning and feeling miserable. That's how the enemy works this morning. But I hear to declare today is my day. Amen. Today is our day this morning. Today is your day this morning. God said today you're going to put something that has been over your head under your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Every devil that is riding you, it's time to put him under your heel this morning. We are the feet generation this morning. The last part of the baby to come out of the mother's womb is the feet. Are you hearing me? And in this dispensation of time, amen, we are the feet generation this morning because why the bible tells us amen that we shall crush the head of the serpent this morning is anybody here have the power to crush the enemy under your feet this morning that's the god that we serve this morning as we go as we focus on our text this morning the salvation that he will show to you today for the egyptian whom you have seen the bible says that you shall see them no more that's powerful this morning. Could imagine that God is saying to you this morning, everything that you have been, that been dogging your dog and, and, and riding your back, there's not going to be any more this morning. Are you with me, somebody? I am, I am fed up, amen, and I'm not going to allow the enemy, amen, to get the best of me anymore. Are you hearing me? I am at a place in my life, I want God to use me this morning. And I'm here to declare to the devil, devil, you have no power over my life. You have robbed me enough of my joy. You have robbed me from where I should have been. But today is my day and I'm going to tell you and I'm going to serve your notice get out this morning amen how many can tell the devil get out this morning amen. devil by the way I want you to know you're trespassing are you hearing me you see it doesn't matter if you have a trespassing sign on your gate it doesn't matter if the thief walk in a mile into your land or one step over the gate he's still trespassing are you hearing me this morning? And we got to recognize, amen, that the devil want to take the stuff that God has given to you this morning. But this is the year of restitution. This is the year that God is going to give you back all that the devil has stolen from you this morning. 
He's going to give you a joy back. He's going to give you strength back, your family back this morning. There's some things you may not be able to get back, but what God will do for you, amen, you will not think about yesterday. You will see a bright future ahead of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yesterday I was down, amen. Amen, I was plagued, but you know what? God did something to me. I have a new step, I have a new song. And no longer I'm going to sing the blues. I'm going to sing, yes, but I'm not singing the blues. Too many believers are singing the blues. We're singing a lot of Tabanka songs. It's time to get rid of those type of songs and sing some songs that bring upliftment in your spirit. I know who I am, amen, this morning. And because I know who I am, I'm going to be healed. I'll have the power, amen, this morning. How many can say, I am a child of God this morning? And so the devil is going to serve some blows to the enemy. It is because they believe this morning. How many believe this morning that God is able to see you through? You see, the enemy was considered this morning. The Egyptians was the enemy. And how many of you know that at that time in church history, at that time in the Old Testament, Egypt was one of the most dominant nation it had. The strongest nation at that time. It was all because, not because they have all the riches, it's because of Joseph. Because of Joseph, Egypt become a richer nation. Because the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine, God gave him and Joseph the wisdom to the dream to explain to the Pharaoh so that when the years of, of plenty, they put him in the grains and vats and keep. So when the world was shortage of food, where think they go to get food? Egypt. And they give up their land and they give money and they give gold because they wanted food. I want you to know you can have all the money but you can't eat it. And when you need food, you will, and, and, and no matter what it costs and you have, you will want the food because you want to live this way. How many you want to live this morning? So if we want to live, we have to give up some stuff. Egypt become a rich nation at that time. But Egypt was the enemy this morning. I don't know what Egypt or the Egyptians mean to you this morning. But for some of you, your Egyptian is sickness. Some of your Egyptians are financial trouble this morning. Are you hearing me? It could be family strife and it could be turmoil that you experience. Your Egypt or Egyptian could be I mean, people who try to destroy your life. I want you to think about who is your Egyptian this morning. Or what is your Egyptian? Who is your enemy? What is your enemy this morning? Because we all have enemies this morning. In fact, as long as you're a child of God, you will have some enemies. Are you hearing me? Enemies that are attacking you. Attacking your ministry. How could you be a child of God, amen, and allow the enemy to beat you up all the time? You're not joyful. The glow of God, the glory of God is not upon your life. Why you are settling to just, amen, just have a form of godliness but denying the power of God? Today is my day. Somebody say, today is my day. Today is my day. For somebody, your, your Egyptian could be, amen, an addiction. A habit that you need to conquer or it had been conquering you. But today is my day and I'm going to have the victory this morning. God is saying to you and I this morning, whatever it is, God said to tell the church, declare to his people, today is your day of victory. I hear me. I said today is our day of victory. How many know that the devil is opposed to you having the victory? The devil don't want you to smile. The devil don't want you to enjoy your life. The devil don't want you to be happy. The devil wants you to have a sad face and a sad song all the time. The devil doesn't want anybody enjoying the abundant life that Jesus came to give them this morning. After the children of Israel are thrust out of Egypt, Hear what Pharaoh decides. Pharaoh decides that he has made a mistake and wants them back and now he's in pursuit after them. He told them to leave but now he realized, you know what? The people, the Egyptian, they don't want to do the work. They get so accustomed to having slaves. And on top of that, the Hebrews is going with all the gold and silver and everything that the riches of Egypt. We need to get them back. And that was the mindset of the Pharaoh. We need to get them back. And so Pharaoh sent out his military 
The Bible tells us, amen. He got his 600 chariots and his war soldiers to go after the children of Israel. Verse 3 says, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel. Hear what? He's going after them, but I want you to see something if you put it on verse 3. Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness had shut them in. Now Pharaoh is saying, in other words, according to this passage of scripture, I got them right where I want them. I want you to see this this morning. He is saying, I got them where I want them. Because why? They are trapped. Read that again. Pharaoh says of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. In other words, they are trapped. They can't go right nor left. There were mountains. They can't go backwards because the army of the Egyptian is coming hard after them. And what is before them? The Red Sea. So in other words, he says, he said a smile. Because now we're going after them. We got them trapped. How many have seen that this morning? I got them where I want them. If somebody were to say that, it means to say they're expressing themselves that they had the upper hand. Anytime a person says, amen, I have them trapped, is they're declaring I have the upper hand over that situation. And that is what Pharaoh was declaring. I got them trapped this morning. I got them right where I want them. It's, I want you to know when somebody speaks these words this morning, it is with a sense of feeling superior. I got them. It is a feeling of confidence. A feeling of assurance that was in the mind and heart of Pharaoh. It spoke with a sense that the other party is at their mercy. And that's what is his mindset. And he says, that is exactly what I'm thinking. I got them trapped. How many times this morning have you been in a place where it seems like all hell is broken loose this morning? How many times in your life this morning you feel that, amen, that it, when it rains, it pours this morning? We all have been there in our lives this morning. And sometimes it feels that you are surrounded and the enemy is coming at you from every side. I have felt that many times in my own personal walk and journey with God. I feel that the enemy is coming from all sides. And many of us, we feel that way. And then you hear the sinister voice of Satan laughing at you and says, Amen, with an attitude of arrogance. Amen, he's declaring and a self assurance saying, I now get them exactly where I want them. And how many of you today, this morning, the devil have got you at a certain place? He's laughing. Because you were serving Christ, you know, and you were walking the walk, but because of something, a situation. Because of the enemy, because of hell was breaking loose in your life, he got you at a place in your life. And you're not where you used to be. You feel empty. You feel dissatisfied. You see, I've recognized something this morning as a church. We could have all the material things and yet still feel dissatisfied. My bills are being paid, thank God. He's still providing. But why it is that you're still feeling dissatisfied? Why it is that in your own personal walk you're feeling somehow dissatisfied? Because it's not, life is not based on how much you have this morning. Because a person can have a lot, amen, and still feel empty. But I've come to understand that if Christ don't fill the gap in your life, you will always be dissatisfied. That's why we need God to fill, amen, this internal vacuum that is in our heart this morning. Are you with me, somebody? And so we, we see here that many people, the devil have worked his tragedy, and he have trapped you. He have snared your life, and you are at this place in your life that you feel, amen, that you are trapped and not everything is coming against you. But let me say something to you this morning. You are my assignment. You are my assignment this morning. Why? Because God told me to declare to you things always is not as they appear. You see, because physically, when we look at it from 
our vantage point, we can say we're trapped. Now let's be logical. Mountain on the left, mountain on the right, the Red Sea in front, and Pharaoh's army is coming in hot pursuit. Physically, we know that we are trapped. Somebody help me this morning. But God told me to tell you there is more that meets the eye. What are you saying, Pastor? In a simple word, God told me to tell you it's a setup. Tell your neighbor it's a setup. It's a setup. He told me to tell you that what looks like the worst circumstances that you will ever face in your life is getting ready to trust you in a brand new glory. You see, because when God wants to take you higher, when God wants to take you to a higher level in your life or a better place in your life, because many times we get so comforted where we are this morning and we don't want to move because we're enjoying the moment. We're enjoying it and we get so comforted. And God has to allow you to go through a process. God has to allow you to go through a crisis. God has to allow you to go through a situation. Because why? It might be irritating. It might be frustrating. But God is saying, amen. The purpose that we're sending it is to push you into our next level. Are you hearing me, somebody? In other words, we got to start thanking God for the people who push us. You see all your haters in them? God has turned your haters into elevators. Are you hear me? Because if they didn't hate me, I wouldn't get to the place that I am be. They talk about me. Amen. By my haters, God has made them my elevator. He took me to another level this morning. Can I get a witness this morning? Can I get a hallelujah this morning? So that's why we got to love our enemies this morning. God have a sense of humor this morning. Because why are you looking into that negative position? Amen. They push me. So what? They push me into my destiny. Something greater this morning. Are you hearing me? So I love my haters. We got to start looking and drawing from what God is saying. He says it's a setup. Let me go ahead and say it like this. God sent an elevator your way and it came in the form of an enemy. Are you hearing me? When they try to bad talk you at your job and they're saying you can't do the job, all of a sudden you get promoted and they're demoted. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because a man gift will make way for him this morning. And who God bless, no man curse this morning. This is the walk of a believer this morning. Who God bless, no man curse this morning. God said he would make your haters into what? Elevators this morning. You see, many times, um, most people saw Goliath as a hater. But David saw him as an elevator. Because if you look at David's life, it's from that moment. That moment when he went against Goliath, amen, he was promoted. He led, amen, he wasn't a trained soldier, but he led, amen, King Saul army. I hear me this morning. Because why? Because God promoted him this morning. Amen. For some of you, you say, Pastor, that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but some of you need to thank those enemies for pushing you into your destiny. Amen. I hear me this morning. Because if they didn't push you, you would have still been in your comfort zone. If they didn't talk about you, and, and because they talk about you, you went to God and they said to cry, God, I can't understand why they're doing me this. Amen. But thank God you sat to pray and you sat to cry out to Him. Amen. And now we brought you to a better place this morning. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere this morning. I'm going somewhere. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I, am, where I am today if it wasn't for my enemies. Everything the enemy sent to take you down, God is going to use it to lift you up. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? You see, God have a, a sense of humor because he says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. They are higher this morning. God will take the simple things of this world to confuse the wise this morning. 
I came to tell you, don't give up on the edge of your miracle. Some of you are on the edge of your miracle this morning. Let me say it this way. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. <laughs> I say, on your journey, that some people left you, but God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Are you hear me this morning? I come too far to turn back now. Go on, yeah, just go ahead and tell your neighbor, encourage him. You come too far to turn back. Tell him, tell him, tell him. You come too far to turn back. God didn't call you out of the water to let you drunk. He didn't pull you out to let you drunk. There's a God that we serve this morning. God, amen, love you this morning. As I told you last week, when you get water, you get wet. We proved that Terry last week. When you get water on you, you get wet. You can't separate it. When you get God, you get Amen. 100% genuine love this morning. When you get God, you get love this morning. God doesn't change this morning. Are you hearing me? So when you have God in your life, amen, expect good things from him this morning. God don't hate you this morning. God is not mad at you. God loves you this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. He didn't bring you this far out of bondage of slavery or Egypt which is Satan's kingdom, kingdom, to let him devour you. God didn't save you to, al to allow the devil to come and devour your life. I came to tell you, help is on the way. How many is crying out for help this morning? God help me. Every day in my cry, God help me be a better pastor. Help me be a better husband. Help me be a better father. Help me be a better friend. Are you hearing me? A better brother this morning. Help me. Because I've learned, amen, from the word of God. Take heed lest you think you stand, lest you fall. We got to be always, because there are people in the church feel, amen, they reach at a place in life that they, nothing bad can happen to them. But I want you to know this morning, amen, we got to just keep on praying. Keep on our God, God our heart, because the enemy will come after you. <laughs> Tell anybody I'm receiving this, I'm receiving this. I want you to know God is closer than you think. He's closer. He's closer. God said to me to tell you. Are you glad that God is talking to you this morning? God said to tell you, He has heard your cry. He has seen your faith this morning. He has seen your tears. And He said, As I have dispatched help. I say, I have dispatched help. When you call, somebody told me. Some time ago, when you have an emergency here, you call 911. Isn't that so? How many agree with that? So the person had an emergency, and they were so panicking that they dial on the telephone 119. The number is 911. And he says when he look outside, he see all emergency vehicles come and reverse him. When you call the emergency number, the dispatch help. And they will tell you help is on the way. Has anybody cried out to God recently? God said help is on the way. Touch your neighbor and say help is on the way. So in our text this morning, the children of Israel found themselves in a predicament this morning. They found themselves in a bad situation. In other words, they were trapped. And I want you to see this from its perspective. In the context of the passage of scripture this morning that is before us, the children of Israel were trapped. I know we are people of faith, but let's be honest about some stuff this morning. We have all been there. And there are times we are serving God, but we still feel trapped. At times, you know, I don't know how, why, but I somehow I just feel trapped this morning. We have all found ourselves, found ourselves in situations that we couldn't get ourselves out of. There are moments in our life that we could look back and say, you know what, there's some situation I couldn't get out of on my own. And sometimes, amen, we are there in those predicaments, and we don't like to hear this many times. Sometimes we are there in a predicament because of our own foolishness. No, pastor didn't say that. 
If we don't believe everything is of God, I'm there because you know it's God's will. But sometimes it's because of our foolishness we end up in certain position of our life. Hello, somebody. Down in the back there, you hear me this morning. Because of our foolishness on our path, because of the wrong choices we make, because of the wrong actions, wrong association. Do you know a wrong association can lead you away from God? Hello, somebody. Wrong association can lead you away from God. Wrong instruction. Because if you follow wrong instruction, it goes the wrong direction. But sometimes, there's no other explanation to, w- to where I am but the devil. Is that so this morning? I understand all of this. But there's sometimes I don't know why I end up here. And the only conclusion is, is the devil. The devil orchestrates some stuff. We have, let me say this to you, church. You and I, the church, those who watch about the internet, we have an adversary who hates us. The devil will not give you something for nothing. You know, there's a trend right now that they say the devil is blessing people with money. There's a prophecy that is circulating that the devil will give Christians money. A lot of it. I think I want some money. I don't know about you. I can do it some. But I want you to know God will provide for me. I'm not going to sell out short this morning. Jesus shows us how to deal with the, with the enemy when he comes in that that particular aspect. He says, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the riches. Tell me, but don't bow. Don't bow to the devil this morning. Don't bow, don't bow. And so, we understand that in some of our conclusion, I am where I'm at is because of the devil. And he hates you. And is intent in destroying your life. Because the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the very intent of the enemy is to destroy your life. You think the devil will give you something with one hand and don't take back something in return? Last night there was a conversation that I think was being mentioned in the conversation. Or in fact this morning, I believe, or last night. It said most of the people, they did a survey, most of the people who won the mega million, all the winners, are in poverty today. Their lives are messed up. Well, that can't happen to me. I know how to spend the money. I want you to know the devil is planning your demise. And he will take you out this morning. You can't go up with the good looks and say, Devil, don't kill me, I'm so pretty. The devil don't care who you are, he hates you. He plans to destroy our lives, our emotion, our physical life. There are a lot of Christians that are suffering emotionally, physically, financially, even spiritually. There are people, even in the church, marriages are suffering because the devil is all over. And if he can't come to you in a certain part of your li- area in your life, he come in the next area. If he can't get to you, he could get to your children. Hello, somebody. He's trying to you you standing strong. He can't get you there, so he attacks you in your finances. He attacks you in areas where it hurts. Are you hearing me, somebody? That's how the devil works. He always, he fight not clean. The devil will always hit you under the belt. That's why you got to understand that who he is because he's a thief. He comes to kill. Are you hearing me? He lies. He's a sweet talker. He's a charmer. 
and many people have fallen for him. He's a bright knight that riding on the white horse. And when you do come close to him and you get to him, you see like a skeleton and dust falling off. I'm trying to put your imagery because why? The way how he presents himself to us is like everything is good. That's why many today, even the greatest among us, have fallen and had been deceived by him. King David was deceived also. But whatever the reason, we know what it feels like to be caught somewhere in something with no way of escape. That's my point this morning. Regardless of what it is, we feel at times that we are trapped and there is no way out. Somebody, I'm talking to you in a place right now that you feel that you're trapped and there is no way out of my situation. You see, the temptation is when we find ourselves this morning in that predicament, amen, is to be just like the children of Israel and begins to murmur. Because when they're trapped, what did the children of Israel say? Why you bring us out here to die? Why not let go back into Egypt? At least we could get some cucumbers and onions to eat. How many times we feel like that this morning? This is the temptation that happens to every child of God in one way or the other. When we feel trapped, we begin to murmur. <coughs> we start to look backward. Begin to blame God. I'm just trying to be real this morning. Are you with me, somebody? We try to blame God for what we are going through in our lives. And, and because why? We say He's not making it easy. And we call His love into question. If God loved me, He wouldn't allow me to suffer. If God loved me, He wouldn't allow me to go through this this morning. He wouldn't allow me to struggle and to suffer. And we start to blame God and question His love towards us. But I want to remind you this morning, tell your neighbor it's a setup. Come on, it's a setup. It's a setup. Tell your neighbor it's a setup this morning. It's a setup. Because God has reason this morning why He allowed you to go this direction. Remember, it was God leading Moses. And Moses, amen, they were fallen Moses. It wasn't somebody else leading Moses and the children of Israel. It was God leading them. I want you to don't take your mind and focus out of what was happening. God tell Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But when Moses, the Pharaoh said, go, take them and go. It was God was leading them. So remember, and that's important as we go along, as we come to conclusion. It was God that was leading the children of Israel. And when they came to that place where they felt cornered and felt trapped, who it was leading them? It was God. Did you see that this morning? It was God. So if God led them in a position and the enemy saw it was a trap and it was working for his advancement, then God must have a reason. Tell me, but God has a reason. The trap, <coughs> excuse me, the trap is not for you. Are you hearing me this morning? I told you what I shout there, but you missed it. If God led them, and Pharaoh said oh, it was a trap, God said to tell you it's a setup, so the trap is not for you. I said the trap is not for you this morning. It's a setup. The trap is for your enemy. Are you hearing me this morning? The trap is for your enemy. Let me break it down. God let your enemy think that you were trapped. God let your enemy see you cry. For some of you, your enemy saw you crying. God allow your enemy to see you crying. God let your enemy see your struggle and see your pain so they would think, amen, you are trapped. What I'm telling you today as a church this morning, God is getting ready this morning to take care of your enemies. And God has been using the situation that you are faced with or going through this morning, this dilemma, this storm to draw your enemies out. Because your enemy have a way of hiding. 
But he's using the trap to draw them out. Because the trap is not for you. The trap is for your enemy this morning. Tell your neighbor, it's a set up this morning. It's a set up. It's a set up. Because why are you thinking I'm trapped? God, I'm no way out this morning. There are people saying things about you. The enemy doing things about you and they're hiding. And God says, this trap is not for you. This is to catch them. I want you to, that's a powerful revelation. The trap is not for you. It's a setup this morning. Because he's using the trap to draw them out of the hiding. Some of the ones that used to walk around and talk behind your back, he could draw them out. Now they're standing in front of your face. Some of them who have been working in the dark, God is turning on the light. I'm trying to be as real as I can this morning. God is uncovering some of your enemies this morning. God is going to pull them out of their hiding place. And he's going to take care of them once and for all. Tell your neighbor, hit them hard. Too long, too long, too long this morning. Too long, amen. The enemy has been fighting me this morning. Tell anybody, it's time for breakthrough. It's time for breakthrough. Somebody needs to prophesy that right now. Today is my day. And the trap is not for you. The trap is for the enemy. You see, it was a very impressive show of, of fierce military might and power. That the enemy, amen, was stampeding down at them. The children of Israel, they didn't have a, a donkey cat. Here with his chariots, iron chariots were coming after them. Military might and power. The, the, the Hebrew people, they couldn't even fight. They didn't train to fight. They were just farmers and they were just people, amen, trying to live, amen, and survive under the brutal dictatorship of this Pharaoh. And all the chariots, the Bible talks about 600 chosen chariots. Captains in every one of them, all chariots and horsemen of Egypt. With Pharaoh leading the charge. Did you see that this morning? It's the same Pharaoh that says whip them. It's the same Pharaoh that says, amen, don't give them no straws to make the bricks. It's the same Pharaoh, amen, had them under bandage. But who is leading the charge against them? They thought, amen, that they were trapped. But God have a sense of humor. Because it's the enemy, the one that was in charge, was leading the charge. I need you to see that this morning. Because there are, there are high-ranking enemies. And there's low-ranking enemies. But the trap is to pull all the high-ranking enemies. Are you hear me? And all the enemies that are following this high ranking because God is going to serve a blow to destroy them this morning. How many can say hallelujah? <laughs> maybe, maybe the children of Israel fell outnumbered because of what they were hearing, the noise of the chariots, amen, and the horses rumbling, coming. How many of you ever felt outnumbered by the enemy this morning? Or ever felt that you, amen, that you're outnumbered this morning. We have all felt that, that sometimes in our lives, amen, they seem like it's more against us than for us this morning. The like they could have never run as fast to outrun the chariots this morning. They were no match for this great army of Egypt. But 400 years, they didn't even know how to fight. And I want to break it down for you because I want you to see this from the perspective of what God has said. They had no chariot, they had no great weaponry, they have no artillery this morning. But they had something. Somebody said they had something. They had something that Pharaoh had forgotten about. Are you hearing me this morning? They didn't have the artillery, they didn't have weaponry, they were never trained in, in, in physical combat. And so all of the Egyptian army is coming against them. But they had one powerful weapon that Pharaoh forgot that they had. Tell him that they had God. They had God. 
I said they had God this morning. I, 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 think, I think you're too calm for that this morning. I said they had God this morning. Because if chariots were coming against you, amen, you might have been in a shake. You know, the people, the old people, they are shaking in their boots. I don't know what to do. But when you understand that they have God, Pharaoh have for God, but I want you God in for God this morning. It was a setup this morning. Are oh, you hearing me? Because why? God going to show how mighty he is against the enemy. So don't worry about the enemy this morning. It's a setup. God is on your side. And if God is in your side, amen, I want you to, with God, you have a majority this morning. <laughs> The Bible says in verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of fire and of, of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptian. Mark that word trouble. He troubled the host of the Egyptian. And so this is important this morning because the Lord has been looking. In other words, he had been watching the enemy. And he has been calculating his action and his moves, and he had been observing the way he had been treating you. Did you, did you hear what I said? Your boss robbing you. He's observing. People talking about you bad. You're taking note. He's observing. Are you hearing me? Everything that the enemy is coming against you with, he's taking note. Tell him, but God don't forget. So you see what the Bible says? That in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptian through the pillars of fire and of the cloud and trouble the host of the Egyptian. The Bible says, God troubled the host of the Egyptian. The word trouble means to distract, to confuse, to disturb, to vex. This is what God did. He troubled them. In other words, what it meant is, all of a sudden, there was dissension in the ranks of the Egyptian army. They got confused, they got distracted, they were irritated, and they became angry at each other. So the enemy is coming against you, but God troubled them. And all of a sudden, their focus is not you anymore. They start to focus on each other. They start to kill each other. They Start to, amen, they, they started to get irritated with each other. There was mass confusion in the, the camp of the Egyptian. And that's what God is saying to you. Because when the devil thinks that he have it all set for you, God can come and change the plans of the enemy this morning. The devil plan to take you out, but God has a better plan for you this morning. I'm trying to tell somebody that God is working it out right now for you this morning. That's what he said. God is pulling off their wheels. You read the passage of scripture and you would see, I'm prophesying to somebody right now this morning that God is frustrating your enemies. Did you, did you, did you get that? God is frustrating the enemy. The enemy trying to do you bad and God is frustrating the enemy. And, the, and then you're saying, you know, let me leave them alone. Uh, everything we're doing is not working against them. Uh, they're getting more mad than you this morning. Are you hearing me? Because why? God is confusing the enemy. What are we doing? I trying to curse this man, doing everything, and he's still jumping up and, 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 and giving me praise. That's what God wants to see his children. That when the enemy is coming against you, don't go whine and cry and stuff like that. Understand he is looking and he's taking note this morning and he will trouble your enemies. I say he will trouble your enemies this morning. That means this morning, as the Bible says, you can see them in verse 25. You can put that up. Hear what God says. God took off the chariot's wheel that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptian. Could you imagine that this morning? The enemies pursuing you and because God troubled them, the wheels of the chariots are coming off. And they think that they, you are trapped. It's because God is fighting for you this morning. I'm trying to tell somebody, amen, this morning that God is working for you right now. God is pulling out the wheels of, amen, from the chariots of the enemy this morning. How many just thankful this morning? You see, if we break it down like this, this morning, 
They can't figure out they went by the OB man to do something on you, but they ain't working. <laughs> they go and get all kind of things to tie and throw in front of your door, and it ain't working. You understand know what I'm saying? They're trying to do the hex, and they're going to cut card and stuff like that, amen, to get something to go against you, but it ain't working. Tell him it can't work against me. You'll be surprised, even sometimes you may not know them, but there are people who do your bad stuff. Do you know there are people who wish you bad? Down in the back, you hear me? There are some people that wish you bad. All of a sudden, they want to go and take a bush bat. Because they think you walk in, if you would say it like that. They didn't walk in. You know why? It's because God is fighting your battles for you. I say he's fighting the battles for you. You know, like you, you, like you have a, 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 a resume and you send a team. And somebody knows you and they see your resume. And it was on top of the pile. So the person who's going to do the assessment, you're first in line. And they don't like you. And so they take it now and they put it underneath. And all of a sudden, somebody walk in the office a little clumsy and they bunk down the whole pile. And all of a sudden, it's cat and they start to grab it up and yours come back on top. I say, hey, they're walking because favor, I hear me this morning. So when you're a child of God, you don't need that fear because God is going to take care of you this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's not walking. Tell him it's not walking. It's not walking. <laughs> so suddenly, I'm coming to a close this morning. How many receiving this this morning? Yes. Suddenly, the Egyptian get a revelation this morning. He says, "This is not us, because we got it figured out. But it's not us. This is not bad planning on our behalf. This is not mismanagement. You know what is this?" This is God. You think the enemy can't get a revelation? The enemy can get a revelation this morning. Because why? When they try to do you all kind of things and they're not working, they got to come to that place to so understand that person have God in their life this morning. This is nothing about bad strategy. This is God fighting their battles this morning. Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. Started this, and the enemy thought he would have crushed us this morning. We had the suits here, we have everything that has transpired. Amen. For this not to go, but when you have God, say with truth to God, are you hear me? He fights your battle, He take care of you this morning. Amen. He will see you true. Tell him it's a setup, it's a setup this morning. Because I want you to know this morning, we may be a small church, but we're big in heart this morning. Because I want you to know, amen, God has blessed us this morning. People around the world are watching our programs. People are calling in for prayer. People are watching our television, amen, um, 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 times on Saturday lunchtime and Mondays. They're watching. They're calling in for prayer. Are you hearing? On the internet, people are, are commenting and saying, amen, they're receiving, amen, the word. Are you hearing? They're receiving what God is doing in our ministry this morning. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, this morning. Yesterday we had flooded with calls. The people watching the programs and calling for prayer. Being ministered by what is going on here this morning. Nothing else but God this morning. Are you hearing me? I say nothing else but God. God said to tell you he's going to step in and take over. And he's going to fight your battles for you and give you the victory. Let me read a portion of scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7 it says, The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And they shall come against thee one way and they will flee before you. Amen. Seven ways. But some of you will be happy to see your, ru your enemies running away. How many just happy to see your enemies run away? 
be happy to see them run away. It's like you have a bad headache. And they say, you have a headache, and uh, I have a headache. They give you a Tylenol, an Advil, and you're glad for the pain to go. But that's not the cure this morning. Because if your enemy could run away, they could come back again. Are you hearing me this morning? I'm not settling for my enemies to run away. And God is saying that to you and to me and to us this morning. Don't settle for your enemies to run away. God said, I'm going to take care of the problem this morning. Because if I leave the enemy to run away, they will come back again. And they might come back even stronger. And they will come back when I'm in a position I'm not, amen, not being fully aware that they're coming. Because the enemy love, love to work, amen, and catch you off guard. So what God is saying to us this morning. I'm not going to allow them to run this time. You know what he says? I'm going to take care of business this morning. I'm going to take care of business because I see you suffered. I see all that you've been through. And now is the time. This is the last stride. I'm going to take care of them before they were running away. But you see, I had to fulfill my purpose in your life this morning. In other words, what God is saying, I could have taken care of the enemy a long time ago. But there's some areas in your life you needed, amen, to shape up this morning. There's some areas in your life you need to get some things, get rid of this morning. Because you could not handle if I were to bring the blessing. Because there was uh, some plot in your life that needed to go. Are you following me, somebody? Amen. I wish I, God could have done it before for me. But God said you were wasn't ready to receive it. I mean, there's some stuff that needed to come out. There's some need, some stuff you needed to get rid of. That's why I didn't destroy the enemy at that time. I used the enemy, amen, to make us strong. I used the enemy to bring, push you this morning because now you come in a place this morning. You're in a better place in your life. You're more mature in your faith this morning. And now I'm going to serve the enemy with one death blow this morning. I'm going to take them out once and for all this morning. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. Amen. Let me get my praise theme on this morning. Come on, this morning. Hallelujah. You see, God don't want you to have a temporary relief this morning. Are you hearing me? God wants to give you some permanent victories this morning. How many ready for some permanent victories this morning? The Bible says, For whom the enemy, the Egyptian, whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more. Are you hearing me? That's what God is declaring to the church. Tell your neighbors a set up this morning. Today is not a day of relief. Today is a day of victory. Would you stand to your feet this morning? If you receive this word this morning, tell your neighbor today is a day of victory. Hallelujah. You see, God will allow your enemy to recognize that they thought the trap was for for the for the um the Israelites but they realize now that the trap was meant for them and the Bible says when they realize it was a trap they start to run for their lives this morning are you hearing me because they know it was a setup God have a way of setting up your enemy this morning because why he's here to destroy them once and for all this morning if you know that God is going to destroy your enemy once and for all I want you to lift your hands this morning and give God praise this morning because he's going to amen he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way he's going to open up the Red Sea and cause you to pass and when you pass he will drown your enemy once and for all somebody give him praise this morning Hallelujah! Come on, somebody praise him this morning. To the back this morning, I know. What the Lord has done. Oh, what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise him. He's on a map.
gonna say that I'm gonna declare that look what the Lord has I want you to see something this morning because sometimes we have to look at it from a the literal standpoint. Because these were real people and a real dilemma this morning. And just like us, we are real and we have real dilemmas. But if God was also real. The enemy was real, but God was also real. And the Bible says when everything was coming against God's people, I want you to know the mountains on either side, the enemy coming in your back, the sea in front of you, there's nowhere to go. What do you do? Do you whine and complain, God is better to stay back in the world? What do you do? Do you give up on God? I want you to know this morning, God told Moses what you have in your hand. You see, that staff has been with Moses for over 40 years. Because when he was in the desert, amen, after leaving Egypt, he was in the desert for 40 years. He went through hardship. He had the staff that hold him up when he was done. He was going climbing. He had the staff. God says, I want you to know, you have saw, saw me do marvelous things and incredible things while you were in a desert place. And now this impossibility is going to be possible. Stretch forth your faith, amen, in the same God that brought you out, amen, all these years. And I'm going to make a word for you this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm coming what through this the morning. Lord has done. Come on, clap your hands today. What the Lord has done. He healed. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. reality and the enemy is coming against me I can't go on the sides because they are mountains and their ferocious animals can kill us plus there's old people they are children they are babies how can we go but God says so move forward I hear me and sometimes they're going forward we got to hold our brother and we got a hold of a sister and said, I know you may be weak, but God said we're going to. Gonna be help you. We're going, we're going, we're going this morning. And sometimes we need each other. I said, sometimes we need each other. So I want you to grab somebody hand. You may not know them and say, listen, we're doing this together. Come on. I want you to hold somebody hand. I said, we're going through this together this morning. I'm coming out. I'm coming out this morning. Somebody say, I have the victory today. Somebody say, I have the victory. Today is my day. The devil is a liar. And he's defeated. I'm going to go where God is leading me. Look what the Lord is going to do this morning. Come on, let's get clear. Hold up person's hand this morning. And tell him we're going through together this morning. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Yes, 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 Lord. What the Lord has done. He healed. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time. I'm going to praise him. To the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole. Come on, you gotta take it back. I took back what he stole from me. I took it back. I took back what he stole. Do you do it? 
Stupid! You are mad! You are victory mad today! Come on, you two feet! Oh, victory mad! Come on! Hallelujah. The enemies are confused right now. I say enemies are confused right now. Hallelujah. The enemy is confused. This is my day of victory. You just want to take it on a little bit this morning. Now God has said he destroyed your enemy this morning. That, that thing, that situation is in God's hands. I say it is in God's hands. He looked, he saw, and he's going to destroy your enemy today. He's going to get on final blow. I want you now this morning because we see and we know what God has done for them. Now, what he's done for us this morning. How many believe that this morning? You see, we've got a faith to believe. My debts are going to be canceled. My bills are going to be paid. There's going to be healing in my body. My children are coming back. My mind is going to be restored. My ministry is going to go on stronger. How many believe that this morning, church? My relationship is going to be fixed. God is going to turn it around this morning. I'm going to be healing my body this morning. Oh, There's an old song that says, I know the Lord will we'll make, make a way, a way for me. How many could say that this morning? I believe it. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will we'll make, make a way, way for me. requirement for if I live a holy life shut the wrong shut the wrong and do the right and do the right I know I know the Lord he will make a way even in the wilderness even in the wilderness and sing, I know, I know the Lord, he'll make a way, will make a way, for me, for me, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. somebody right now right here right now he's touching somebody right now receive that this morning come and receive that touch this morning some hands are lifted up God is trying to get a word into your spirit this morning and the Lord thy God is making a way where there seems to be no way this morning God we declare your healing virtue flow through that body this morning 
God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, make a way, God, to the storm. Make a way, oh God, to the wilderness, God. God, make a way, God, Father, when there seems to be no way, Lord. Right now, break the barriers, Lord. God, give us a momentum, my oh Lord, to turn this God. Everybody in this house, thank just give him a praise. God, God, thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank, thank you. Jesus. Come on, he's bringing you out this morning. He's dealing with it. He's dealing with your enemy right now. He's confusing the enemy right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. He's dealing the death blow on the enemy. I receive my prayer back. I receive my strength back, God. My ministry back. My anointing back. My family back. My finances back. Oh God, right now make a way, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now I want you now, I want you to declare, Lord, come on, everybody, Lord, thank you for my haters. Come and say it one more time, Lord, thank you for my haters. Because you have allowed my haters, because you have allowed to, become haters to become elevators for my life. My life. And this moment, and this I'm going up. I'm up. going to the top floor this I morning. To Come on. Say, I'm going up. 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 I'm going up this morning. I'm going up this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We are the church this morning. Come on, give your praise on this morning. This may be the moment, this may be the moment. The wheels of the enemy is coming off. This is your moment. Come on, don't miss it this morning. The Lord is dealing with your enemy this morning. blessing this morning. Lift your hands, everybody all over this place. After we close up, just want to make it known for those who you want special prayer. We have our ministers and the pastors here that are willing to pray for you before you go. I know some of you are sick in your body. We also want to remember Brother Johnny who is in the hospital in Brooklyn. 
We've been praying for him. We're going to believe and continue to believe in God. They will touch him right where he is. He's a person. He's not giving up faith. He's holding on even though his body is weak. He's holding on. Maybe right now he's watching the program. He loved God. And while we have strength this morning, amen, we can do so much. And so as you lift your hands this morning all over this place, God knows that you've been here today. God wants you to hear the simplicity of the word that is a setup. God says it's a setup this morning. The enemy thought he had you trapped. But God says the trap was not for you, the trap was for the enemy. And he had get them where he want them and he's going to deal the dead blow to them. And so you're coming out victorious this morning. And so as every hand lifted this morning, those who watch him by the internet, right at your home this morning, on the job place. If you just lift your hands this morning to receive this morning, the blessing. Father, we thank you that you are the true and only, oh God, awesome and magnificent God. God, we thank you that we can put our trust and confidence in you, Lord. That you will not fail us, God. We thank you that you are the God that fights our battle. You're the commander-in-chief, oh God, Father. You're the Lord of hosts this morning. And we thank you this morning, oh God. Father, Lord, for dealing with our enemy, God. We thank you, oh God, Father, that we didn't understand it then. But God, we know now that the trap was not for us. The trap was for our enemy. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you have declared, oh God, that we, there's going to be a way where there seems to be no way this morning. God, we are coming through and we are coming out this morning. And God, I declare this morning, oh God, that every home, every life, I've represented here, oh God, have received this word. When they step out of this building, God, they're walking in victory, God, because their mind has been already captivated with your, what you have declared. God, the enemy had military power. The enemy have artillery, oh God. They have all the soldiers and the chariots. But oh God, we have God on our side. And today we live in here confident, oh God, Father, and assured, oh God, though we may not have the military power, oh God, God, we have God in our lives, oh Lord. And God fights for us this morning. He fights our battles this morning. He is looking and he's confusing. He's troubling our enemies this morning. And I pray this morning that we walk in this victory that you have declared to us, oh God. And know, Lord, that whatever we are faced with, oh God, is just a setup, oh God, to bring us in that place, oh God, of total deliverance from our enemy. So God, I thank you, God, for favor. I thank you for your love and kindness. I thank you right now that lives are changed. Oh God. Hearts, oh God, have turned back to you, God. I pray those who are discouraged, oh God, lift their spirit up this morning, oh God. I pray God that those who are looking, oh Lord, for help, Lord, and they cry out to you, Lord. Help me, Father. You will stretch your hands towards them, young or old, this morning, wherever we are, God. Father, from a ge geographical standpoint and a spiritual standpoint, reach us where we are today and I pray God that we will see Lord that our enemies are destroyed but we could declare oh God if we are for God this morning who shall separate us from the love of God no famine no pestilence oh God no height no depth no mountain no valley nothing will separate us from the love of God thank you oh God for blessing us thank you for fighting for us this morning thank you God for making a way for us this morning and Jesus Jesus name. Go ahead and praise him and say thank you Lord this morning. Oh. In the name of Jesus. Hug your brother. Hug your sister. And tell him you're leaving here victorious this morning. Amen and amen. God bless you.